Hey everyone, welcome to this video on the installation of Kali Linux. If you want to learn more about Kali Linux and why is it beneficial for users when compared to normal operating systems, an explanatory video is linked above so you can click on that video before proceeding further. There are multiple ways to install Kali Linux. We can either install it on a normal hard drive in a virtual machine software such as VMware or VirtualBox or we can do that in hard bare metal machines. Now for the convenience of explanation, we're going to install Kali Linux today on a virtual machine software known as VMware. VMware is able to run multiple operating systems on a single host machine, which in our case is a Windows 10 system. To get started with Kali Linux installation, we have to go to the website to download an image file. We go to get Kali. And as you can see, there are multiple platforms on which this operating system can be inverted. As per our requirement, we're going to go with the virtual machine section. As you can see, it is already recommended by the developers. This is the download button, which will download a 64 bit ISO file. We can download 32 bit, but that is more necessary for hard metal machines. Or if you're going to use it for older devices, which do not support 64 bit operating systems yet. After clicking on the download button, we can see we have a window archive which will have the ISO files. For now, we have downloaded the ISO file and it is already present with me. So we can start working on the VMware side of things. Once the ISO file is downloaded, we open up VMware workstation. We go to file and we create a new virtual machine. In these two options, it is highly recommended to go with the typical setup rather than the custom one. The custom is much more advanced and requires much more information from the user, which is beneficial for developers and people who are well versed with virtualization software. But for 90% of the cases, typical setup will be enough. Here we can select the third option, which will be, I will install the operating system later. In some operating systems, we can use the ISO file here directly and VMware will install it for us. But for right now, in the case of Kali Linux, the third option is always the safest. Kali Linux is a Linux distribution. So we can select Linux over here and the version, as you can see here, it have multiple versions such as the multiple kernels. Every distribution has a, a parent distribution. For example, Kali Linux has Debian and there are other distributions which are based or forked from some parent distribution. Kali Linux is based of Debian so we can go with the highest version of Debian, which is the Debian 10.x 64-bit. Go on next. We can write any such name. We can write Kali Linux so that it will be easier to recognize the virtual machine among this list of virtual machine instances. The location can be any location you decide to put. By default, it should be the documents folder, but anywhere you put, it will hold up all the information of the operating system. All the files you download, all the configurations you store, everything will be stored in this particular location that you provide. When we go next, we are asked about the disk capacity. This disk capacity will be all the storage that will be provided to your virtual machine of Kali Linux. Think of your Windows device. If you have a one terabyte of hard drive, you have the entirety of the hard disk to store data on. How much data you give here, you can only store up to that amount of data. Not to mention some amount of capacity will be taken up by the operating system itself to store its programs and applications. For now, we can give around, let's say 15 GB of information. Or if it recommended size for Debian is 20, we can just go ahead at 20. It depends all on the user case. If you are going to use it extensively, you can even go as high as 50 or 60 GB if you have plans to download many more applications and perform multiple different tests. Another option we get over here is storing virtual disks as a single file or storing them into multiple files. As we already know, this virtual machine run entirely on VMware. Sometimes when transferring these virtual machine instances, let's say from a personal computer to a work computer, we're going to need to copy up the entire folder that we had mentioned before over here. Instead, all virtual machines have a portability feature. Now this portability feature is possible for all scenarios 
except it is much easier if they split the virtual disk into multiple files. Now, even if this makes what porting virtual machines easier from either system to system or software to software, let's say if you want to switch from VMware to VirtualBox or vice versa, the performance takes a small hit. It's not huge, but it's recommended to go with storing the virtual disk as a single file if you have no purposes of ever moving the virtual machine. Even if you do, it's not a complete stop that it cannot be ported. It's just easier when using multiple files. But in order to get the best performance out of the virtual machine, we can store it as a single file over here. This is a summary of all the changes that we made and all the configurations that have been settled until now. Now at this point of time, we have not provided the .iso file yet, which is the installation file for the Kali Linux that we downloaded from this website. As of right now, we have only configured the settings of the virtual machine. So we can press on finish. And we have Kali Linux in the list. Now, to make the changes further, we press on edit virtual machine settings. The memory is supposed to give the RAM of the virtual machine. The devices with RAM of 8 GB or below that, giving high amount of RAM will cause performance issues and the host system. If the memory has some amount of free storage left, let's say on idle storage, my Windows machine takes about 2 GB. So I have 6 GB of memory to provide. Although if you provide all of the 6 GB, it will be much more difficult for the host system to run everything properly. So for this instance, we can keep it as 2 GB of memory for the virtual machine instance. Similarly, we can use the number of processors and we can customize it according to our liking. Let's say if we want to use one processor, but we want to use two different cores, we can select them as well. Hard disk is pre-set up as the SCSI hard disk and it does not need to be changed for the installation of this operating system at all. CDID DVD. This is where the installation file comes. You can think of the ISO file that we downloaded as a pen drive or a USB thumb drive, which is necessary to install an operating system. To provide this, you're going to select use ISO image file. You're going to click on browse. Go and go to downloads and select the ISO file over here. Select open. And you can see it is already loaded up. Next, in the network adapter, it is recommended to use NAT. This helps the virtual machine to draw the internet from the host machine settings. If your host machine is connected to the internet, then the virtual machine is connected as well. There are some other options such as host only or custom segments or LAN segments, but those are not necessary for installation. Rest of them are pretty standard, which do not need any extra configuration and can be left as it is. Press OK. And now we can power on this virtual machine. In this screen, we can choose how we want to proceed with the installation. We have a start installer option over here. So we're going to press enter on that. We're going to wait for the things to load from the ISO file. Um, the first step in the installation is choosing the language of the operating system. For this, we can go with English as standard. This is a location. This will be used for setting up the time and some of the internal settings which depend entirely on the location of the user. So for this, we're going to go with India. Configuring the keyboard, it's always recommended to go with the American English first. Many people make a mistake of going with the Indian keyboard if it is possible and it provides a lot of issues later on. So it's always preferred to go with the American English and if later we see some necessity of another keyboard dialect that is required, we can install it later. But for now, we should always stick with American English as a basic. At this point, it's going to load the installation components from the .iso file. It is a big file of 3.6 GB, so it has a lot of components that need to be put into the virtual machine, which can also be used to detect hardware.
Once the hardware and the network configuration is done by the ISO file, we want to write a host name for the system. This host name can be anything which is used to recognize this device on a local network or a LAN cable. Let's say if we use the name Kali. Domain name, we can skip it for now. It's not necessary as such for the installation. This is the full name for the user. Let's say we can provide the name as simply learn as a full name. Next, we're going to set up a username. This username is going to be necessary to identify the user from its root accounts and the subsequent below accounts. For now, we can give it as something as simply one, two, three. Now we have to choose a password for the user. Now remember, since this is the first user that is being added onto this newly installed operating system, it needs to be a password for the administrator. We can use whichever password we like over here and use the same password below and press on continue. At this point, it's going to detect on the components on which the operating system can be installed, like here. There are multiple options like the use entire disk, use entire disk and set up LVM, use entire disk and set up encrypted LVM. For newcomers, it is recommended to just use the first one since LVM encryption is something that you can learn afterwards when you're much more hands-on with the Linux operating system. For now, we're going to use the use entire disk guided installation and press on continue. When we set up the virtual machine on VMware, we had set up a disk capacity. There we gave a purpose 20 GB. That is the hard disk which is being discovered here. Even though it is a virtual disk, on VMware it acts as a normal hard disk on which an operating system can be installed. So we select this one and press on continue. Here there is a multiple partition system. All the operating systems that are installed have different components. One is used for the keeping of the applications, one for the files, other for the RAM management and other things. For newcomers, it is always recommended to keep it in one partition. And we're going to select that and press on continue. This is just an overview of the partition it's going to make. As you can see, it has a primary partition of 20.4 GB and a logical partition of 1 GB used for swap memory. Now these kind of naming can be confusing for people who are not well versed with Linux operating systems or in general virtualization. But for now you can go ahead and press on continue as this will be fine. We can press on finish partitioning and write changes to disk and continue. It's just a confirmation page. As you can see, it's wrote that SCSI3 is our virtual hard disk of 20 GB disk capacity. We write the changes to the disk. We press yes and click on continue. At this point, the installation has started. Now this installation will take a while depending on the num amount of RAM provided, the processors provided and how quickly the performance of the system is being hampered by the host machine. On quicker systems, this will be rather quick while on the smaller ones, this will take a while. Since this is going to take some time to install as it is being run on a virtual machine with only 2 GB of RAM. We're going to speed up this part of the video so we don't have to waste any more time just watching the progress bar. Now that our core installation is completed, it's asking us to configure a package manager. The work of a package manager on Linux operating system is similar to the Google Play Store on Android mobile devices and on the App Store for the Apple devices. It's an interface to install external applications which are not installed by default. Let's say for Google Chrome or any other browser which can be used to browse the internet. At this point of time, it's asked us to select a network mirror. We're going to select as yes and move forward with this. Next, it's going to ask us for an HTTP proxy, which we can leave it as blank and press it as continue forward. At this point of time, it's looking for updates to the Kali Linux installation. This will fetch the new builds from the Kali server. So the installation is always updated to the latest version. Now that the package manager is configured, we have the grub bootloader. 
The grub is used for selecting the operating system while booting up. Its core functionality is to allow the operating system to be loaded correctly without any faults. So at this point of time, if it asks install the grub bootloader to your primary drive, we can select it as yes and press continue. Remember the installation was conducted on dev SDA. So we're going to select installation of the grub loader on the same hard disk that we have configured. We press this one and press continue. So now the grub bootloader is being installed. The grub is highly essential because it, is, it shows the motherboard where to start the operating system from. Even if the operating system is installed correctly and all the files are in correct order, the absence of a bootloader will not be able to launch the OS properly. As you can see, the installation is finally complete. So now we can press on continue and it's going to finalize the changes. Now you can see Kali Linux being booted up straight away. It doesn't check for the ISO file anymore since the operating system is now installed onto the virtual hard disk storage that we had configured before. Here we're going to enter our username and password that we had set up before. And we have the Kali Linux system booted up. And this is your home page. We can see the installed applications over here which are being used for penetration testing by multiple security analysts worldwide. All of these come pre-installed with Kali Linux and others can be installed using the APT package manager that we had configured. We can see a full name over here. And with this, our installation of the Kali Linux is complete. Hope you learned something new. If you have any questions regarding this problem or how to install Kali Linux further using normal machines or any other operating system, feel free to ask us your questions in the comment section and we will get back to you. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.